Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So, in this video, I will be explaining you dietary requirements. Now, why do we need to uh, know eat food? Like, what is the necessity to eat food? What is there in the food and all that? If you ask this fun fundamental question, so the food is necessary to maintain our fuel needs of our body. Like, you no, know, we, we need this daily energy expenditure and the calories that we need and that is coming from the food. Not only that, like food is going to provide a simple building blocks that are like carbohydrates, protein, like you know, amino acids, fatty acids, glucose, something like that to uh, for our fun uh, cells to you know, uh, replicate to uh, uh, function in a healthy way. And also the uh, diet is going to provide vitamins, minerals and all the essential nutrients that are required to uh, uh, function for the cell to function in a healthy way. So, that is why we really need to uh, take a diet and uh, know how much diet, how much uh, should be the nutrient in that particular diet and that is measured by something called as recommended dietary allowance or rec uh, so, the, this recommended dietary allowance actually it is the amount of nutrient, amount of specific nutrient that should be present on an average uh, basis uh, which will keep or almost uh, like all the people uh, uh, like almost all people healthy. It is like 97 to 98 percent of the uh, population in that particular age group or in that particular gender uh, uh, will be uh, will be healthy if that much amount of uh, uh, nutrient is included in the food. That is what is actually referred as recommended dietary allowance based on the scientific data. So, whenever this uh, sufficient data is not available at that time, so there is something called as adequate intake and this adequate intake it keeps uh, more, uh, the people uh, in a healthy way, but not necessarily like 97 to 98 percent of a population. So, anyway, so the most commonly used uh, nutrient measurement in all the food labels that we all see is the recommended dietary allowance. Now, let us move on to see what are the major macromolecules that are necessary to uh, that are uh, required in our diet that is carbohydrate, we have uh, fats and also we have proteins. So, we have carbohydrates, fatty acids which are simply referred as lipids and the proteins. Now, the carbohydrates, so there is no absolute necessary of the carbohydrate if you if the person is taking proteins and uh, lipids in his, uh, in his or her diet, but the carbohydrates uh, are uh, uh, used as a fuel for our cells uh, we, because the most important uh, the fuel for most of our cell is the glucose, right. It is coming from carbohydrate. And also the carbohydrates uh, when they undergo metabolism, so they will uh, synthesize and now uh, they will make uh, metabolic intermediates which will go into a variety of pathways and that will, uh, they will help in the formation of uh, fatty acids, they will, it will help in the formation of different types of non-essential amino acids. So, carbohydrates as, as such is done, it is not an absolute uh, uh, necessity. Uh, because as long as if we take uh, lipids and uh, sufficient proteins because we can synthesize glucose or the carbohydrates from proteins and also uh, some types of fatty acids. Now, let us move on to see the lipids. Now, the lipids like most if we are taking sufficient carbohydrates, so lipids can be synthesized from carbohydrate in the other way round. Right. So, we can synthesize fat, uh, 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 saturated fatty acids. So, we can synthesize some kinds of unsaturated fatty acids. So, we can synthesize phospholipids, we can synthesize triacylglycerol, cholesterol, all that can be done by the carbohydrates by using carbohydrate intermediates. But the thing is, there are some fatty acids that we cannot synthesize our body do not have the ability to synthesize that kind of fatty acids which are referred as essential fatty acids. There are two kinds of essential fatty acid, one is alpha linolic acid, other is alpha linolenic acid. Now, the alpha linolic acid once we take it, take it in our uh, body in the diet, so the alpha linolic acid is converted into arachidonic acid which will become part of our cell membrane whereas alpha linolenic acid which it will be converted into. Uh, eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid. So, these are these molecules especially alpha linolenic acid. So, fatty acids they can uh, they, they are rich in uh, fish. Now, uh, some of the you know uh, plants like flax seeds and all that. So, they also contain good quantity of uh, uh, alpha linolenic acid which is a omega 3 fatty acid whereas alpha linolenic acid is a omega 6 fatty acid. 
Now, uh, coming to the uh, proteins. So, the amount of protein that is needed in our diet is uh, 0 0.8 grams per day. So, per kg per day, 0 0.8 grams per kg per day. So, uh, in an uh, for an average person, so uh, in male it is like 60 uh, grams of protein is needed per day, whereas for female it is around 50 grams of protein that is needed for uh, per day. Now, within this protein like you now the proteins are basically composed of amino acids like not all amino acids are essential for our body uh, especially in the diet you No, know, they are all essential for our cells, but uh, in the diet so not all uh, amino acids are uh, absolutely required in the diet because we can synthesize some of the amino acids. So, there are some amino acids which absolutely cannot synthesize them and that type of amino acids we really need to take them in our diet and those amino acids are referred as essential amino acids. Now, there are 8 absolutely essential amino acids and uh, these essential amino acids need to be taken in the diet otherwise we cannot synthesize them in our cells. So, the, those are absolutely essential, essential means they are required they are mandatorily present in our uh, diet food that we eat. There are some amino acids they are referred as conditionally essential amino acids. This conditionally essential amino acids partly they can some quantity we can synthesize them in our cells, but only thing is when there is a requirement when there is a high demand for these amino acids. Uh, so, the whatever the little amount of amino acids that we synthesized in our body they would not be able to uh, sufficiently meet our requirements, especially like you know in uh, something called as positive nitrogen balance like pregnancy, childhood where the growth and development is going on. During that time, uh, there is an additional need of certain amino acids that those are referred as conditional essential amino acids. So, we have four of them, uh, they are tyrosine, cysteine, histidine and um, uh, arginine. Okay. So, uh, these are the uh, semi-essential or conditionally essential amino acids. So, that is all about uh, 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 dietary requirements. So, we have covered proteins, we have covered uh, lipids, we have covered um, uh, carbohydrates and uh, vitamins, minerals of course, they should be part of our uh, diet because not all vitamins we can synthesize in our body except with certain exceptions and of course, minerals we cannot we are synthesized we have to get it from the diet. So, these are our uh, dietary requirements. So, we need to make sure that uh, all these things are present in our diet to keep it like balanced so that uh, we stay healthy. Okay. That is about dietary requirement I am uh, I will see you in my next video till then you take care.